Hey everybody, Matt Covey from Suburban Canine, and today I'm here to walk you through operant conditioning. The reason I'm making this video, I've had a couple requests lately, and what people have told me is the other videos on this topic that other trainers have made are so freaking complex that they just don't even make sense. I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but the ones I looked at, what I feel like is sometimes people explain this in a way to make themselves sound smarter. Like, hey, I'm a really smart dog trainer. Listen to this complicated thing that only I know. Operant conditioning is not that hard. And honestly, I give this talk at schools to young kids, like second graders, and they understand it very well. So I'm gonna break it down for you today, just like I do for them. And it's not to prove how smart I am, it's to prove how simple this is. This is dog training, it's not rocket science, it's not, we're not trying to go to the moon here, we're just trying to understand operant conditioning. So let me start by explaining, there's four quadrants to operant conditioning, and you've probably heard some of these before. You have positive reinforcement, you have negative reinforcement, you have positive punishment, and you have negative punishment. Now before I really get into the details, let me just give you two examples. If you tell your dog to do something, and you say, hey, you know, Ralph, sit, and he does, and you say, good boy, and you hand him a treat, what is that? What did you just do? I would guess you said positive reinforcement, right? That's exactly what you did. Let me give you another example. You say, Ralph, sit, and he doesn't. And you say no with a tug and you ask him to sit. Or Ralph jumps on you and he jumps up and you say no and you push him off. What did you just do? Which one is it? It's not positive reinforcement, we know that. What is it? Now, I would guess if you, get, if you, had, a, if you had a real guess and you said something, I would guess you probably said negative reinforcement. And guess what? you'd be wrong. That is not negative reinforcement. It's actually positive punishment. So let's dive in and figure out why. Operant conditioning, this is going to be like kind of mess with your mind a little bit here if you haven't learned this before. Positive does not mean good and negative does not mean bad. Weird, right? Positive could be good. Positive could be bad. Negative could be good. Negative could be bad. What it means is positive means you're adding something in. Negative means you're taking something away. I'm not gonna use the word stimuli or stimulus, I'm just gonna say thing. You're adding something or you're taking something away. That's it, that's what positive and negative mean. Now, let's talk about the other words we have, reinforcement and punishment. Reinforce means you're trying to reinforce the behavior, right? Make it more likely to happen again. Punishment means the opposite. You're trying to make the behavior less likely to happen again. And you're using either positive or negative to achieve that. So, let's talk about this. Positive reinforcement, we talked about that earlier, super simple. You ask a dog to sit, he does, you say, good boy, you hand him a treat, you pet him, you added something in to reinforce the behavior. Same with come. You say, Ralph, come. He runs to you, you say, good boy, you're so smart. He gets there, you scratch his ears. That's positive reinforcement, right? You added something in to make him more likely to do that action again. He realizes, hey, I come to you, cool stuff happens, he's more likely to do it. All right, now let's talk about that correction. So let's say Ralph jumps on me. So he jumps on me and I push him off and say no. Did I take something away? No, right? I, I added. Did I take something out of the situation? Absolutely not, I did the opposite. I said no and I pushed him off, that's positive. Remember, positive is not good, positive means I added something in. So if my dog jumps on me, I push him off and say no, what I just did is I used positive punishment. I added something in to punish that behavior to make it less likely to happen again, all right? Let's go to the negatives. Negative reinforcement. Negatives, it's kind of weird because you have to, I encourage people to think, and honestly, you could stop the video for a second and think negative reinforcement, what is that? We're trying to reinforce the behavior, right? We're trying to make that behavior more likely to happen again. For negative reinforcement, that means I'm taking something away. By definition, if you think about it, whatever you're taking away has to be something the dog considers bad. It has to be something that's an aversive to the dog, otherwise, taking it away would, make, would do the opposite, right? If you're taking it away to reinforce a behavior, the dog's basically saying, whew, good thing I listened, that went away, whatever that was. So that has to be an aversive to the dog, right? Leash pressure is a great example. You get, you're tight on the leash, you say heel, your leash pressure is not fun, right? Who would like something tight around their neck? So leash is tight, you say heel, dog gets back to heel position, the leash gets loose, collar gets loose, so that went away, the leash pressure went away when the dog got back to heel, and the dog realizes, okay, I listened to heel, and that unfun thing, that negative thing, that bad thing, that aversive thing goes away, so they're more likely to heal. They're more likely to get into position because they learn that goes away. Now, that just leaves us with negative punishment. This works a lot better with humans because humans are much more complex than dogs, but 
Negative punishment means we're taking something away to punish a behavior, to make the behavior less likely to happen again. That means we're taking away something that the dog must consider good, right? So because it's meant to be a punishment to stop the behavior, to make it less likely to happen. So a good example would be, you're, you know, you're petting, about to pet the dog, you've got a treat, whatever, your dog jumps on you and you take the treat and you put it in your pocket. And your dog realizes, wow, when I jump, I don't get that good thing, it went away. So he's thinking, I was about to get that treat, I jumped, they put it in their pocket and the dog starts to realize, hey, maybe I shouldn't jump so much because that thing's gonna go away. Now, what a good trainer does is they use all four quadrants, right? You're using a, a little bit of each of these depending on the dog. One thing you need to remember though, is that operant conditioning, it's all based upon the dog making a series of choices. The dog is thinking, right? And dogs are not stupid, right? They're learning based upon, they learn what's gonna happen to them. Something good or something bad might happen and they change their behavior because of that in the future. This is called operant conditioning, very, very different than classical conditioning. Please don't mix the two up. If you wanna learn about classical conditioning, we've got a full video on the topic but that involves a series that it's involuntary. So in classical conditioning, the dog is not making a choice and operant conditioning, they are. So that is it for today. If you have questions, drop a comment. I would love to help you out. Reach out anytime and make sure to like and subscribe.